Um, so um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to participate in this, um, I think, really important event, um, not least because of its timing. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world, but there's specifically um, a lot happening in the last couple of days that I think is apposite to the conversation that we're having um, today. So, um, I mean, the question is why keep Britain tidy? I'll explain a little bit of that as I go, but we are, we are um, the uh, charity that delivers eco schools, which uh, again, I'll explain a little bit about, which is fundamentally the, the, the world's largest in, um, environmental um, education program. We also deliver the green flags and Antonia's just um, uh, highlighted those there. And that's all about the standard, the, the upper standards schools can reach, but also standards for, for, for shared green space. Um, and we do a number of other initiatives, which I think make us very well placed to be part of this conversation. Um, I, 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 I talked before about the timing. Coronavirus, as we know, is a catastrophe that is very much a result of environmental mismanagement. It, 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 isn't, it is here because we have ignored the environment uh, and the price economically we're paying for making uh, bad choices um, is absolutely astronomical and comes on top of all the other um, uh, costs that our younger generation have been asked to bear um, for such things as our very carbon hungry economy. Um, so coronavirus is itself uh, very much a price we're paying for environmental mismanagement. Uh, and that is something I think young people are very aware of. The other thing that I think is really interesting that looking at the 18 top economies in terms of their coronavirus economic recovery package, only five of those are carbon um, neutral or positive. So most um, economic re recovery packages will in fact make the carbon crisis worse, which is a fantastic illustration of how current leadership and current thinking um, is really behind the curve on this. And um, although the UK is one of those five, I think it's also exciting that leadership fundamentally in the last uh, 24 hours has changed. So the Joe Biden package to uh, recover um, the US economy from um, the coronavirus pandemic is fantastically um, improved in terms of its scope and ambition. It moves the dial about 12 points. So from being um, uh, carbon negative, um, carbon positive through to substantially carbon negative. And there is a reason for that. Not that Joe Biden has a long history of being an environmental campaigner, he does not. But what he is, is a man who's been elected by the future generation. So, um, you know, more people voted in the US election than um, have voted in the US for 110 years. He managed to mobilize people who've never voted before. And although Trump won more votes, um, Biden won overall because he mobilized the younger generation. And I think the combination of having a young vote mobilized to support an old man who purports to be able to do more for their future than his predecessor will send a very strong message if he follows through to, um, you know, well, he, if he doesn't, he's going to have problems. But if he follows through, we'll send a very strong message, I think, to political leadership, which is old thinking, carbon heavy, um, old thinking, avoiding the cost of, you know, decisions, talking about the economy as if it stands in isolation to the future of the environment. Um, it is, is old thinking, and I think it's a thing of the past. So I think thinking about young voters and the difference that they can make, you've only got to look across the ponds. They can make all the difference in the world. And it was the younger generation and people of colour that got rid of Trump and brought us um, an administration with significant um, um, uh, scope for hope that at least, if not, the US is obviously not going to become much of an environmental uh, beacon but it could certainly make less of a, of a problem for the rest of the world as it is a sing, the single largest consumer per capita of, of any country in the world um, in terms of its carbon consumption. So I think this is a very timely, um, uh, um, very timely discussion. And I think the most important thing to remember about young people is that they're not anchored by failure like our generation are. We, we know we've tried and things have failed. 
I, I also have three um, uh, young adults as as, uh, as my children, and they they try things and they succeed, <laughs> and that makes them very ambitious, which is great. Um, they haven't tried things and failed, and so they aren't going to start a conversation with what's not possible. They start conversations with what is possible, and that's the kind of energy and vision that we need for the future because without it we're not going to be able to dig our way out of what is quite frankly a catastrophe. Uh, and it came sooner rather than later, even for sort of uh, environmental campaigners like myself. So um, I'm here to talk to you about eco schools, particularly. Eco schools is a wonderful, wonderful program. It's 26 years in the making. It's in 67 countries. It is the largest global um, education program anywhere in the world, aside from being environmental. It's also obviously the largest environmental education program in the world. Um, in the UK, we have 20,200 um, education settings which have registered in our program. Um, it's student led um, and it's the only program that allows young people to get a qualification that's UNESCO um, uh, recognized and really sets a standard. And it's about, it's got basic tenants and it really educates children right the way through from primary up to university um, about what difference they can make. And that's the thing about Key Britain Tidy. We, we, you know, we, we, we talk about not being about polar bears, but being about on, you know, the environment on your doorstep. And we are a very local based charity that think helps people think about local based solutions. So it's about what individuals can do to make a difference. And, Doing, making decisions um, like changing lifestyle choices can make a huge impact on the environment because each and every one of us is consuming far more than, than, than is sustainable for the future of our children. So uh, we, we, in the past, we campaigned on things like um, one of the tenants of the original conference 25 years ago was to ask the, for supermarkets to reduce their um, plastic bags. Keep Britain Tidy campaigned. We had a fantastic campaign called Break the Bag Habit. Um, we chaired the coalition of charities that brought about the bag charge. Um, and we're very proud of that. So about 9 billion fewer plastic bags have found their way into, um, into circulation. That makes a huge difference. As also the organization that leads nationally on picking up litter, I can tell you what a difference that has made. Even our underwater surveys have shown that, you know, there's a 40% reduction of plastic bags on the seabed which you know, is a very depressing place to find a Tesco bag. Um, we also promote green spaces. So we do think the, the green flag for um, parks um, and, uh, and that's about reaching standard. Our green flags are only available to spaces that are free to access to the whole public. Um, and they are about making sure that they're safe and a quality place for people to meet. And I have spent so much time in the last um, few months talking to the media about the importance of parks and listening to people, um, our supporters in particular, talking about how it's sort of saved their, you know, saved their mental health by having that space to go into. And I think it's really interesting in lockdown too, that um, meeting somebody in a park who's outside of your bubble is one of the few things that distinguishes lockdown data from lockdown one. And I think that's recognition of just how important that social habit is. Um, we also do the blue flags for beaches um, and habitat management. We do things like Love My Beach and Love Parks. And so we're all about helping people to appreciate the assets that they've got and make the most of them. We work with over 300 local authorities on their waste and recycling strategies. You know, it, it is about reducing how much we consume and then recycling that which we do consume before, God forbid, it ends up being litter. And then it's all about trying to retrieve that for future generations because it frankly doesn't go anywhere and we run something called most people have heard of the great british spring clean last year we mobilized over 600,000 people to get on the streets and help us clear up which is important people say oh well you know that's not going to help anything it does it sends a big message that this is completely unacceptable it also brings communities together to have these kinds of conversations that make a difference so for eastbourne what i would love to see and i think this is really important it we have areas of the country where we've got lots of schools signed up to eco schools. Maidenhead is an example, um, supported by the local MP there, Theresa May. Now, Theresa has been fantastic in helping us get as many um, uh, eco school programs into the um, into into the, the the area. 
but they, it's not universal and not all of them have green flags. So if Eastbourne wanted to be the first place in the UK to promote um, uh, eco schools, get eco schools into all your schools, and then support them to get up to a green flag in all of those schools, that would make it unique and certainly be a tremendous legacy to the uh, benchmarks that were established by those kids 25 years ago. So for me, that would be a huge breakthrough and something we'd be very excited to support you through and eminently achievable, frankly. Alison, can I bring in can I bring in Jonathan at that point? Because yeah, yeah you've absolutely. Just, you've just you've just set out a, a, an achievable, I believe, an achievable um, uh, uh, challenge. Jonathan, by 2030, all our schools, by 2025, all our schools, we've managed to persuade all the educational leaders and the parents who send their children to those schools that they are can become green flag schools by 2025. And Alison, I, th I think you told me about the Maidenhead connection, how important it is to have councils have a member of staff within the council team who have this as part of their remit, a part of their emotional engagement with this. It and I know Jonathan. Right, so Jonathan, over to you, because we do have somebody within our council, don't we, Kate? Kate. Kate Richardson. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we do. We have, we have, she's, she's the strategic lead and we're just employing um, at the moment, the job, the job spec is out for a, a community engagement officer as well. But the most important thing I think about what Alison was saying is that we, we have a resident led group that works in partnership with Eastbourne Borough Council. So at the moment, many of you will know local authorities are struggling for cash. The coronavirus has hit us desperately. I don't want to get into that now, but the point is there's an awful lot of changes in how the local authorities are structured. And um, what we've been, um, developed in Eastbourne through the amazing cooperation of the people at the Eco Action Network is this partnership working, this working in absolute co cooperation. Because whilst our plan is to take Eastbourne as a town to, to carbon neutrality by 2030, of course, the Borough Council, in terms of its operation, only really represents about 1% of that. So 99%, one could argue, is resident led. So to have a resident led organisation, is absolutely incredible. And within that resident led organization are subgroups and they are education, they are business and commerce, they are air, air quality and so on. And, and, and um, uh, carbon capture. And there's lots of um, subgroups that people can get involved in. And I think Paulina from her, her education experience is very, very much involved in the education side. And because the point about making mentioning the local authority earlier was that obviously there's a limit to the, number, the amount of resource we have available to us now within a local authority. So to have these people who are gladly giving their time are highly experienced and know the industries in which they are involved in the groups they're involved in is absolutely brilliant. See Pashti Down School here as well and Oliver Sterno who, who leads on, uh, on Plastic Free Eastbourne. These highly motivated people, because I know at Pashti, for example, they have the... Um, the uh, the the uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think what they're called now. But the, the 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 are they called the warriors? The green warriors. We're going to hear from them later, Jonathan. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. we've and, got a lovely film. I was, a, I was a I was a governor at Pashley, and they're wonderful. Used to be led by Rachel Hutchinson. Did a fantastic job um, of of really instilling in very young um, uh, uh, pupils the importance of, of 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 recycling and making the maximum use of the resources we have available to us. So from my point of view, I think Alison coming in to somewhere like Eastbourne to talk to us about how we can do things better, absolutely open to that because we're totally about partnership working. I don't believe for one second that I have all the answers and I don't, which is why I rely very much on the Eco Action Network and Kate Richardson, who's a strategic lead and the officers around me who know far more about this than I do, but we're working very much in partnership. And same with, um, with, with, with yourself, Antonio, making sure that the expertise and the skills and the contacts we have with people like Kim Schmidt and, and so on, are so important to us to make sure that we use every bit of um, resource, every bit of opportunity that we have to, 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 to sweat those assets, if you like, to ensure we hit our 2030 target. Um, and I think and Jonathan, I think you're absolutely right. So we, we are all here. And I think what we have to try and keep in our minds is how as adults do we facilitate those young people to encourage us to keep focused on that target? 
Okay, how do we motivate them to say what they want is that these schools should be green flag status? How do we make sure that those children aren't being told by their teachers, oh, actually, it's much more important you do your literacy uh, session or your numeracy yeah. session? That's going to be our challenge. But I, I suppose what we're doing here, Alison, is by you coming in here, you've given us a good target to aim for. And we have the goodwill of schools through us, Eastbourne Schools Partnership and parents through what Paulina is doing and different adults within the town. And I would say that we need to reach beyond the town. Like all towns, we need to use all the networks, all the contacts that we've got all around the world in order for all of us to be able to achieve an overall ambition. And if we've got Theresa May, a child, in when she was a child, she was born here in Eastbourne. And if she has made Maidenhead a green flag beacon, then I would suggest, why are we working in isolation? We should draw on that contact. So we ask Maidenhead to help us achieve that target because we don't know how to do it yet and we need to ask those that do know how to do it to help us to achieve that. Now Alison, I am going to have to say thank you at this point because I, we're running five minutes late. No and problem. I, uh, but I want you to stay there and any point that you want to come in just put the questions like we've had coming up. I think I've had a question from Michael who is saying where are the children here? They are watching behind the scenes uh, at Pashley Dan. This is being recorded so that they can see it because one of the challenges that we've got is how to reach out to the children and an opportunity is that we are recording this so they're going to be able to see this at a later time in their break in a lesson etc so i'm now going to hand over to a tremendous eco warrior champion who was once a teacher based in london who um alumni is dizzy rascal and i hope this time next year we will have dizzy supporting uh, what we're doing in eastbourne oliver can i hand over to you and thank you very much alison please stay there